Hi all, going to try something different for a change. First thing you appear in front of the camera rather than behind it. Going to have a go at taking an item from uh, being basically dirty. Just had a, a grinder run over it a, a few months ago. Uh, clean it in the sandblaster, preheat it in the oven, powder coated it and all the little bits in between to see, show you what the process is. Tried it the other day, didn't come out very well. My, unfortunately my iPhone didn't, work, uh, didn't produce me very good pictures and quality or video. So I'm going to try it again with the iPad, see how I get on. What I intend to try and do Today is to have a go at cleaning up the, one of the WooArt supports, uh, quite badly corroded. Quite a lot of surface rust on it at the moment, as you can see. Uh, give it a good old sandblast. It's had a coating or a lick over the grinder quite a while ago. A little bit of surface rust, the garbage a little bit damp, so it's coming on there again. Still got quite a bit of metal on there. I'm hoping it's going to last me again a few more years. So I'll whack in the sandblast to see how I get on. Just looking around the garage, I've got a. Um, Sandblaster set over here, which I've done some mods on recently. I've originally got that when I was doing some powder coating a couple of years ago, or quite a few years ago now. Couldn't really get it to work that well, but hopefully it's, uh, it's improved now. Behind us, we've got the, the oven that you've probably seen a few more pictures of already. It needs a bit more work done. I've got to try and renew, renew the side panels that haven't lasted as I'd hoped. There's a, a reason why that is me trying to uh, cut a little bit, a few little corners. Tomato um, propagation tech, which I use for me, actual spraying of the powder. And goes into the oven for curing. So I'm going to do some, a bit of video and I'll whack a bit of it on um, speed all up later on to try and squeeze it into a 10 minute video. So I'm going to start off by getting the sandblaster powered up and do some blasting. So see you in a minute. So this is a desktop unit obviously for Machine Mark. Costs about 120 or quid I think now it is. Got it a few years ago. Got replaceable covers on here. So you've got the little tail strip like the old drivers there on there. Crash helmet, so once it gets all smegged up, you can uh, take it all off. There's normally a tube that lays in the bottom here, picks up the sand, directs it to the gun. You get air supply comes in, bottom left hand side, and tube effect drags the sand that goes out in the nozzle, various sizes of nozzles you can use. Um, obviously, jets the, the sand or whichever media it is you use, it's normally not sand, normally other things. Sand tends to be a common name that's given to it all. Blast off the paint really easy, obviously gets off rust as well. I've got an exhaust system set up here to suck all the, uh, the dust out at the moment. Air comes in on the bottom left hand corner over here. Uh, I've got a light that's already fitted here but I've now put uh, an LED one here. With a uh, sacrificial plastic bit of uh, covering over it so once it gets um, again damaged or charred by the, the dust I can replace it all. So I'm going to get myself set up, do a bit of blasting, put my PPE on. Be a bit noisy because the vacuum cleaner will be going as well and the compressor, but you'll get an idea what I do. And then I'm going to do a little video inside the cabinet to try and show what's going on. Right, I've had a go at using the media blaster to take off most of the paint, light rust, um, some of the, the debris and dirt. In some cases I've had to take a little bit of a lick to it with the ankle grinder where the damage is a little bit harder. So I've had to do a little bit around here, a bit more in, um, buried in. Um, you can obviously see the grey effect where I've had the, the, the media blast against it. Made it look a little bit better. I'm now going to clean it up with some of this acetone to get rid of some of the, the dirt and the dust that's still on there, get it ready to put into the oven. So it's a good wipe over with this, and then dry, uh, dry it off and then blown off of an airline just to make sure it's all nice and clean. Right, that's the sort of muck that came off of that. We need our support, even though it looked reasonably clean, that's the, the dust and the debris that's left on there after the sandblasting. So I'll give it a wipe over the acetone, blown it off of the airline, got it reasonably clean. Turn the oven on, uh, stuck a bit of wire on here, got it suspended in there, a little bit of preheat just to get rid of any uh, any nasty contaminants that's still in there. I'll put it in there for about 10 minutes on a reasonably low heat and then we'll get the, the gun ready, get some powder coating done, get it all nicely covered up. So I'm going to go and go with the, um, the satin black which I'm using on most of the components. I'm uh, just going to get this all ready, the booth all fired up, ready for some powder. Here's just quite a, a fine powder, as you can see. 
you normally don't put more than about two thirds in the uh, bottle it gives it a nice bit of space for the gun to aerate it and get it blown out at the end so that should just about do me for what I need to do for tonight for the powder coating you only need about about 10 to 15 psi so I normally um, try and set it up whereby I've actually got the airline blasting through That's when I'm putting the nozzle on the trigger, so or just on the uh, the normal little air blaster. So that's getting me about right between 10 and 15. I'm going to change the air supply over to the gun now. Put the powder on here. Obviously, invert the gun. Get it all set up, which means hanging the part on my one of my racks here. Putting the negative lever either onto the wire up that's hanging onto it onto part itself. Operate the foot pedal, which is down there. Uh, turn obviously the machine on at the right time. Get the uh, powder charged up. Get it all stuck to the part and let's see how we get on. Right, parts in the oven trying to get uh, hotter I've increased the temperature I had it on about 50 degrees on just to take the the preheating on so I've now waxed it around to let's tweak it up to 225 what we should see in about five or ten minutes is as the temperature comes up the actual powder will glaze over or, or wet out as they call it goes all glossy starts to tell you getting up near temperature for this particular powder you need to go to 180 degrees for it to fully start to do its stuff and then once it's at 180 which we can check with a uh, infrared thermometer later on uh, you then time 10 minutes and then it'll, it'll cure upon nicely onto the metal take it out let it dry in the air and then when it's cool it's ready to use you can bubble it on your car do whatever you want to it it's as hard as ever going to be unlike paint which normally needs a few days to fully cure so i'll leave that for a while come back and i'll show you how we test the temperature and then hopefully we can start the timer off Right, this is the thermometer I normally use. Infrared digital one, so you just end up pointing at an object, get a nice red light, and it tells you what the temperature is, in this case 36.4. With a quick look inside the oven, so I can tell you that some of the uh, parts are starting to go all nice and glossy. So it's shining right now. Quick check of the temperature. 108. So when you're looking at 180, so I'm going to go inside have a nice cup of tea, give it 20 minutes and see how we get on. Right, been inside for a while, have a nice cup of tea. Uh, just pop that outside again. Try the temperature on this uh, art support, 199. So that's good enough for me. I'm going to leave it now for the few more minutes. It's been that temperature for a little while. And then we'll take it out of it, dry and have a good look at it, see how it comes out. Right, I've got this uh, art support just cooling in my garage at the moment. It's still far too hot to sort of handle. I normally just let it cool down naturally. It's come out pretty well, the coating. I've got, uh, as you see earlier on, quite a bit of corrosion that's built up or taken place on the tops of the arms where it's been hit uh, underneath the weed arts with stones and crap for the last few years. Um, it's, it was the, the tubular bit of it was really galvanised. It's quite hard to get really good condition on it. But the, the top sections from here down to here on both sides are normally covered with a heat shrink and these two bits up here are normally the bits that are, that are exposed um, so obviously that's a bit that goes on the cab and, on, and onto the hub so it's pretty good coated all over no uh, bits showing through uh, not a fantastic finish on the bottom bit but so I didn't expect that because it's quite old now I do think it's going to last a lot longer than a normal paint coat would, uh, would last uh, hopefully this video has given you an idea of the, the, the quick process you need. You don't have to do use a, a media tank. You can obviously just normally um, try and, and get most of the, the rubbish off with sandpaper, grinder, good old uh, elbow grease. But it normally sets out for a pretty good coating. Depending on what you've got, you can obviously use whatever you like. Uh, but that seems to be the far easiest way of doing it. So hopefully that's taken through the process. You understand what's involved now. And you may well fancy doing a bit of it yourself one day.